Hey you guys, this is Brandy Chanel. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to your Bell Collective Season 1, Episode 6 review. We're going to go ahead and do this uh, podcast style because I was supposed to get my hair done today and I ended up not getting it done. But whatever, we must move on and press on and keep it moving. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, you guys. So Letitia and Latrice meet up to have drinks and talk about Fair Street. So Letitia is basically telling Latrice her plans for Fair Street and basically is trying to make her become a um an investor. And you know Latrice is all on board and they get in on the conversation of Marie. And you know Latrice feels like Marie is a mean girl and she is. Uh but I feel like Latrice can be, you know, a little bit, you know, mean, but she's just very passive aggressive in her meanness and you know Latisha pointed it out. Now, Leticia, what I'm going to need you to do is the same way you pointed it out to Latrice. I'm going to need you to point it out to your girl, Marie. I'm going to need you to give her the same energy. But, you know, all in all, they had a good conversation. Everything turned out well. So let's move on to Tambra, y'all. Um, Tamra and this, this, oh my God, her, her makeup, her hair, the lipstick, all of it just gets on my nerves. Her voice really just gets on my nerves, but she's at the doctor and you know, she's had, she has a history of having fibroids and you know, fibroids is something that can potentially prevent you from having children if you don't have surgery and that's what she finds out that she has to have another surgery i really do feel like you know at 40 <laughs> i don't know about y'all at 40 i ain't trying to handle damn kids like 35 is the cutoff <laughs> you know i'm just i feel like these are things that you should be taking care of early in life if you know at some point you want kids um but i'm glad that she's getting you know i'm happy she's having surgery to get you know, to kind of rectify the situation because she does want kids. So that's that's good for her. Antoinette is having a meeting with doctors. And listen, y'all. Um, <laughs> so Antoinette is having a meeting with black doctors. And a lot of things that she is saying, I agree with. I feel like there needs to be more black doctors. You know, her whole stance on black doctors and black dentists is ve is a very good stance. It's a very pro-black stance, which is kind of confusing to me why she has a friend like Kalon, right? So Kalon is there. Again, why is she there? I get it. She's a nurse, practitioner, uh, a nurse practitioner or whatever the fuck. And K um, Antoinette explains that she wanted her there because... She wanted her to see what professionalism looked like. And I feel like that was a low key shade to Letitia's brunch, but whatever. So after the meeting, which was, you know, was it was a good meeting. They go talk and Kalon had the audacity to say now she know what racism is or what it feels like because she had to witness her race being put down so now she can relate bitch if you don't get all the way the fuck up out of here carlos i do not want to see kaylon next fucking season because i i feel like this is really insulting to have this woman on this show and then you got antoinette being you know talking about the importance of black doctors and black women but then have this woman who is just so ignorant and we are not having her. We are not taking her in this day and age. With the climate and everything that's going on, Kaylon don't need to be around us nowhere near our damn TV, okay? First of all, you're, they was not putting down your race. They were not. They were not putting down your race. They were telling you the experience and sharing their experience with racism who, unfortunately, Kaylon, your race is the oppressors, Okay? So you have no clue what they feel and how they felt. And even if they were putting down your race, like you like to put it, you will never, you will never really know the actual experience of a minority, especially a black person, because you're, the oppressor has done much more than just put us down. Okay. They have killed us. They have raped us. They have beaten us and they've done it for years and still continuously do it. So you have no clue. 
as to what it feels like to be a minority, a black person in this country. So for you to get your ass on this TV screen and say that bullshit was completely out of line. And Antoinette, I'm kind of side eyeing you because at that point you just stood there, you nodded your little head and you didn't say nothing and you should have checked that bitch. That girl had me so high. I'm moving the fuck on because I swear to God, I, I'm, I'm so irritated. Whew, moving on. Antoinette is having a rededication of her house. Okay. Um, she's not inviting Marie, which is understandable because that's her house. And Marie has showed her ass twice. Um, you know, in Antoinette's mind, the last time she, the last two times that Marie and Antoinette have been in the same spaces, Marie has showed her ass. So I get it. Um, I don't understand her not inviting Letitia because Letitia has been very nice to her. She has been very open to her. Now, of course, it's her house. She can have whoever she want at her house. However, I feel like you saying that Letitia never holds Marie accountable is Marie accountable for her actions. It's kind of like, well, bitch, you never hold Kaylon, uh, hold Kaylon, uh, accountable for her actions. So how the fuck is you going to sit up here and talk about Letitia? But moving on. So it's Latrice and Zaddy's AKA, uh, Cliff's anniversary. And he walk in, you know, well, first Latrice walks in, she said, you know, on the anniversary, you know, they usually don't do nothing, but you know, he promised her a fabulous, you know, anniversary. They've been married for five years. It's a milestone. Understand. She's coming in looking all pretty. She don't see nothing set up. She looking around like, what the fuck going on? He ain't got nothing set up. And, you know, she calls him, he comes down, he hands her a gift and it's a bag of flour. Bro, what? what the fuck i was like what like what in the hell like i it, it was bad acting because it was so it was so random like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> like what where did that come from i don't know whether he was trying to be funny or i don't know it was ve it was very much so a manipulative thing that he did because he knew how she was looking forward to this and he decided to play games so after that you know she get she gets mad he go upstairs and he changed and Latrice said he looks like, you know, Denzel Washington mixed with Barack Obama. I said, you's a motherfucking lie. This man look old and, and country as hell. But anyway, so they go in the little golf cart. They go down to um, the little spot on their, on their land where he has it set up and everything looks nice. He buys her a Rolex. Um, it was very, very nice. And, um, you know, they get to talking and Latrice expresses to him that she has abandonment issues. Every man that's been in her life has pretty much abandoned her. And I, I really think instead of her marrying an older man, she should have gotten therapy to fix these abandonment issues. But, um, it comes off as insecure. It really, really does because, she then brings up how he's always, you know, complimenting other females. And she feels like, you know, he can possibly find another woman and then leave her for another woman. Um, I feel like that wasn't the time to bring that up. But I think he put 20 on 10 and the way he reacted. Um, first off, you know, all I, I feel like the approach he took was very manipulative. First off. What you should have said is shot anniversary. So what the fuck you should have said was, babe, you're the only one for me. I love you. I ain't going nowhere. I'm always going to be by your side no matter what. That's what you should have said. Instead, you tried to make it her fault. You knew how much she wanted this anniversary and you tried to put 20 on 10. Now, did I think it was the wrong thing for her to say at the time? Yes. And I also, but I also think she was opening up to him because she wanted him to know like, Hey, this is what I'm feeling. You are not making me feel secure in this relationship. And we have seen him compliment other women. She did come. He did compliment her, uh, her friend, her business partner. I can't think of her name right now, but we saw her do, we saw saw him do that so I don't understand why he got upset like he don't do that and he's I'm pretty sure he has mentioned other women to him because he's done it before so I don't know why he got up mad um he left her and took the golf court back and I the little golf cart back to the house and I thought that was very disrespectful but you know whatever um 
Marie and, you know, she, Marie is with her son and her husband. And she reveals to us that she has lupus. Y'all, I said it time and time again. The reason why Marie is the way she is is because she is going through a lot. On top of having a a son that don't, you know, that don't appreciate her and having all these issues. She has a husband that, um, she has a husband who I really don't even believe that's her husband. I believe, you know, he is just for the show. I believe that, um, that girl, Essie, her business partner, friend, whatever is, you know, I think they got a little thing going on. That's what the word on the street is, but you know, you ain't heard it from me. Um, but you know, I think the reason why Marie is who she is, is because she going through a lot of shit. And on top of that, she has lupus. So I, I get it, but it don't make it right. Um, she is telling her son that, you know, she appreciate, appreciates him coming to the, uh, the therapy session. Um, and she has 10 businesses that she one day wants him to, to run. Um, and I, I don't, I think that's good. I think that we should start passing down, you know, generational wealth and all this, then a third. Um, however, like you got to make sure that you prepare your kids at a younger age for that type of life. Because I don't think even if he does get his degree, I don't think that her son will be able to handle it. I don't think he's mature enough. And that's just my opinion. I don't think he's mature enough to handle her businesses. But I don't know, maybe when the time comes, he'll change and got it together. But I, I, at this point, he's not mature enough. So we move on to Antoinette's rededication to her house. Tamara is there and she says she didn't invite Marie or or Letitia. And I'm like, well, how did you invite how did you invite Tamara? Because like really, how close is her and Tamara? Like, I didn't know they was that close, but okay, whatever. So everybody is there and Tamara. The, Tamara, I don't know if it was Tamara or Latrice. I can't remember who brought up Ferris Street. Okay, so Somebody brought up Fair Street that was not Kaylon, and they started talking about Fair Street, and Kaylon decided to come out her mouth and say something about, you know, how do you how how can you try to convey a message that's an important message when you got people taking their earrings off and acting crazy and this and the third, and you know my reaction was, bitch, why are you even speaking? Like why? Like, I don't, I understand people don't like Marie and I don't like her. You don't like her attitude and I don't like the way she treats people. But I just feel like Kaylon is out of line and they are not putting her in place. And I was completely with Tamra when she was saying that, you know, I don't understand why Kaylon is talking about Marie. I don't understand why, you know, she, and I get that she defended Marie because it's like, you know, you're not going to put down this woman's business when you don't have one, Kaylon. All you, we know you to be, you say you a nurse practitioner, but all we see you here doing is following up behind Antoinette. So I, I really don't get it, but okay. So, um, they start, you know, doing a little stupid shit around the house. It was really just stupid and corny. They start burning sage and they done burnt it. They didn't have, they have so much of it going on that they end up setting off the alarm. I don't really think you're supposed to be doing that, but Okay, it was it was real corny or whatever. Latrice sets up a dinner with Cliff. Um, she wrote a letter to him, basically, you know, saying how she feels, expressing how she feels. Like I said, I don't really feel like it was that deep. And he made it that deep to the point where he took her damn Rolex. I, that is so manipulative and so childish. And I could not believe that's what he did. It's like she's a child. So you know how when children do something bad or do something you don't like, then you take away they 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 toys or they you take away they um you know they they PS five or they shoes or something like that. That's what how he treats her, and she's allowing it because she's so insecure about the relationship. But you guys, that's it for uh Bell Collectors. I don't know how I'm really feeling about this series. I will stick to it. Um, hopefully season two we get something better, but. 
Sometimes I'd be really frustrated and mad and irritated at some of the conversations and things that are going on, especially with this Kaylon chick. She's really pissing me off. And, you know, and then there's episodes like this that is really fucking boring. Like I, I thought it was uh, I thought it was boring. I like I think a lot of the episodes are boring and then towards the end it start picking up. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about this episode of Bell Collectives. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. And you all have a great day.